Oh, please preview first. I always forget that step. <laughs> I will find that picture. It's, com it's coming. Are you sure you want to start? Why, yes. Yes, I am. I'm in 2016. I still haven't found it. <clears throat> We're in 2019 now, Mark. You're a couple years behind. <laughs> Look way back. I am. I don't remember when that trip was. What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. You may have noticed we have Mark from Me Lives Reef in the background. Welcome. I am the background. I'm the help. You are. You are the background. So. I just have to throw this out here. I was originally messaged you and was talking about my topic today, and you responded with a photo of a bag of your sump full of bags. Uh huh. H how many cleanup crew did you acquire? <laughs> uh, these just arrived today, and yep. I got a thousand and sixty-three. <laughs> so, as you can tell, it was perfect timing. So I'm like, all right, Mark, you're coming on today's stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. So hopefully everyone's having a fabulous Wednesday. Welcome, guys. We got Lisa, producers, Reeve, Tina, K Town, Adam, bunch of guys rolling into the chat. Welcome, everybody. K and A Reefing, what is up? I so, probably should get on your channel so I can see what they're saying about me. All bad stuff. <laughs> YouTube.com slash Reef Dudes. Did you ever explain why it's dudes? <laughs> no, one, one day you I will. You still haven't. <laughs> Hilarious. It's because I have a very creative video that would be entertaining in mind, and I just haven't had the time to do it. Oh, the channel is live right now. <laughs> I know. 420 mm -hmm. Reefer, what's going on? Braveheart, welcome. If you guys don't know who Mark is, um, I'm, I'm actually going to post a link to your channel in the description. Oh, man, you're so good. I know, right? So, melivesreef.com, or if you just search for that, you'll find him, because Mark is everywhere. <laughs> you can just google me live that's what i always say google me live yep all right i'm still gonna post a youtube link later i did post a link i actually found a very useful section on mark's site about a critter id so i already updated that link in the description so if you got something weird in your tank you want to know what it is there's a good chance you can peruse all that photo gallery and identify it so it's always useful what's going on robert reefaholic christopher mayor welcome welcome guys so today I want to talk about cleanup crew. I've had a few different questions recently, you know, what's good for this? So I have diatoms, what can I do to get rid of it? Or I got hair allergy. So I figured it'd be a really good one to dig into. That and I threw a poll in the Facebook group and this one won. So that's today's topic. Uh, so what are, actually one of the first questions brought up earlier is, first of all, do you quarantine or do you drip or acclimate? Or what do you do when you add new cleanup crew to the tank? Uh, personally, I've never quarantined them. However, it is a good idea because there is always a possibility of something hitching a ride on the shell or with a little creature. So it is a wise thing to do. I generally will acclimate it. Inverts tend to be a little bit more sensitive. So I will drip acclimate them or just mix a bit of water, wait 10 minutes, drip it again. Basically manual form of dripping. Uh, but one of the two is what I do. Um, how about yourself, Mark? Do you acclimate cleanup crew? Do you quarantine? Yeah, definitely. It all comes down to how they were shipped or how you purchased them. Okay. So in general, if the store, you trust them, you don't bother quarantine. If you don't, you do? No. What I mean yeah. is, for example, some of the stuff I received today was dry shipped. Okay. And Clean up crew, dry stuff shipped. That I received was wet shipped. And so that they have to be acclimated differently. Define dry shrimp shipped. Uh, like... They'll take the like a whole bunch of hermit crabs mm -hmm. and they'll put them in a bag with some wet newspaper and that's it. Really? Didn't know they could survive that long. Good to yeah. know. Crazy. All right. Same thing with snails. So yep. basically what happens is they put them in the bag like that. You receive it. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is you want to pour water in the bag, slosh it around, and pour it out. And you're washing the ammonia off their shells. Ah, okay. You take the critters, and you can actually get them into the tank much hmm. more quickly. Interesting. I've never heard of it being dry shipped before. That's a, first, that's a new one for me. Huh, good to know. Okay, so you're talking about, so they do it with snails and hermit crabs. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, on a completely random side note, I have heard of people transporting coral just wrapped in like wet newspaper through mm -hmm. carry-on or something to not deal with the water restriction. So I guess it makes sense. Similar idea. Yeah, it is. Okay. So when it comes to cleanup crew, uh, one of the first ones most people add to their tank is generally something like a hermit crab. Those guys, where's my little picture? Um, so hermit crabs, uh, I used to have them in my tank. I haven't actually added any to the new tank. They are generally pretty useful for stuff. Like they will pluck away at hair algae and cyano. Some of them will sift through your sand. They're going to need detritus, leftover fish food, all that type of stuff. 
Uh, now, the one slight issue is they can pick on other stuff. So if they tend to like to have bigger snails all the time, got to mute that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so the one small issue, you should mute your YouTube in the background because I can hear myself. Okay. Uh, so the one issue that you have with hermit crabs is that um, they're very opportunistic. So if they are hungry, they can potentially go after other creatures. They could potentially, I've heard rumors, some claim that they could potentially eat corals, like some of the flash off stuff, if they're hungry. This, this is going to go for a lot of the cleanup crew. A lot of them are opportunistic. So if they're well fed, generally they're pretty happy as non issue. But if your tank's underfed and they get hungry, then they're going to be a little opportunistic. So always want to keep that in mind. So a couple different guys. That's kind of a cool little zebra one. I haven't actually had one of those before. I've had the orange, the red, the electric blues. Um, supposedly they eat cyanobacteria. I haven't personally seen or experienced that one. I don't know. Have you ever seen hermit crabs eat cyano? No, usually what happens is they walk through it and they break it up because they're crawling across the sand bed. But to, to actually consume cyano, I haven't really seen that happen. Okay. Yeah, so that's about the same boat as me. I've One I've never actually seen before. Um, now, there's a lot of other cool ones like um, Halloween hermit crabs. Like Those are one of my favorite just because they look awesome. Um, this guy, for me, he's been extremely harmless. I've never seen him do anything negative to the tank. He just, you know, he'll go graze up stuff. He'll climb up corals and sit on the top. There's a little bit of algae on it. He'll peck at it. Awesome little cleaner. Yeah. Um, it actually cracked me up. The one I have, like, in the photo there, he's high-sided himself multiple times on a rock in my tank. Mm -hmm. And I've had to, like, take him off. And somehow he gets it. And then the next day, he climbs up to the same spot again. I'm like, what are you doing? King of the mountain. <laughs> I know. He tries to be. It literally is king of the mountain. So, yeah, th they're overall pretty entertaining. Same with those guys. Like, they will eat hair algae. They'll eat cyano, meaty foods. Most of the hermit crabs, if you're feeding your tank something like mysis or a lot of frozen foods, they'll go for it as well. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of good. You don't necessarily want to be dumping in food to try and feed your cleanup crew. Like, they're going to pick up all the stuff the fish don't catch or that your power head traps under a rock and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So that's good stuff to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah. no, you're not going to feed your cleanup crew. And, see, that's the thing I tell people. They, they complain, I have an algae problem. And I say, tell me about your cleanup crew. And I'm like, well, I have three snails and four hermits, and then I've got a starfish. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how big's your tank? 600 gallons. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, you need <laughs> hungry cleanup crew. And mm -hmm. everything you buy from the fish store is starving to death. Those things all arrived without food. And why are they so clean and pretty? They've all cleaned themselves. You know, literally, they're cleaning their brothers and sisters, so to speak, you know, for the lack of a better description. Mm hmm. That's why all their shells are pristine. You don't see a bunch of dirty cleanup crew at the fish store. It's always brand oh. new looking snails. Uh, I should see if I can find the photo later. I think I put it on Instagram before. I was at a buddy's house and his one of his snails literally had a mohawk of hair algae. It was hilarious. I had to take a photo. That's my point. The stuff in the tank gets grown over and hideous. Yep. But the ones at the store, when they bring them in and they drop them in their tank, those guys clean each other and they clean the tank mm -hmm. and the tank is pristine. You don't see a tank full of algae when you're buying cleanup crew <laughs> because they're hungry. So yep. I always say, go get new hungry critters and put them in your reef to eat the algae. And it's mm -hmm. it's an important step. Mm -hmm. And if people don't do that, they're going to keep dealing with algae problems. And it's just, that's why I bought so many today. 1,000 in your tank is going to be spotless by morning. You know, I'm a little upset because one snail died in that shipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered 1,064 and only got 1,063. I'm, that's actually, I'm that's if not I bad. for a credit, maybe? I don't know. I want my dollar back. Rogue <laughs> Aquariums, $4.99 cheaper chap. Thank you very much, Rogue. Much appreciated. Uh, what is that in Canadian money? Is that like a, a dollar? What yeah, do you it's get? like an extra like 30 cents, maybe. <laughs> um, speaking of Rogue Aquariums, if you haven't checked it out, he has a nice 500-gallon tank in the build, which I'm excited to, for him to actually get that wet and going because that's going to be an awesome build. Uh, uh, tangs equal cleanup crew, 100% do. Fish are actually a good chunk of it. So we'll, once we get through all the little inverts and stuff, we'll get to those guys. Mm -hmm. Um, another big thing is too, is not to overdo your cleanup crew. When I see people in these giant packs, like Mark and his thousand, he's putting in his tank. Uh, <laughs> generally, if you, if you do add too many, they're not all for his tank, don't worry. Um, but generally if you add too many all at once, there's a good chance they're going to run out of food and then they could starve and die. And that's just going to add more nutrients to your tank. And it's just escalating that problem that you're trying to get rid of and deal with all those nutrients. I've got a funny story for you. So a okay. while back, I ordered a bunch of cleanup crew for some customers. Mm -hmm. And when I did it, 
one of the customers, after it, the order was placed and it's on its way here, he says, oh, yeah, I'm not going to need it. I picked some up yesterday locally. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, great. So I had set up my 60-gallon uh, frag system that basically was full of algae. Mm -hmm. And I think I put in a total of, I think it was 600 critters in that tank. The next day, that tank was pristine. It was the most amazing transformation. <laughs> I wish I'd time-lapsed it because that was fantastic. I just couldn't believe my eyes. So, yeah, there's times when you need a lot of crew, but then you need to get them to other people's tanks. You don't want them mm -hmm. to die off instead of starvation. And you don't want to feed the cleanup crew. Yep. You want to feed the tank. Mm -hmm. um, someone's just asking how many crabs per gallon. I can still hear myself in your audio. Um, <laughs> I've got mine turned off. I don't know how you're hearing what's coming through here. I mean, mine's on mute, so I don't know what you're... I don't know either. Black magic. We okay. Can, <laughs> we can blame Facebook. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, that's I'm okay. Just... I'll turn on the volume so I don't notice it. Um, so crabs per gallon. Back in the day, they'd say one per gallon. Honestly, like one for closer to 10 gallons seems like more appropriate to me for them not actually running out of food. That's kind of my take on it. Like well, in, I just do a critter per gallon. So yeah. if you have a 100-gallon tank, you need 100 critters, and that's going to be some snails. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a conch. That's going to be a starfish. That's going to be an urchin. Yeah. That's going to be some hermits. And all that adds up to the total of 100. So mm -hmm. that's how I recommend the number. Nice. Hey, Greg. Um, so the big thing is, too, is variety, right? Because certain snails are going to go through the sand. Certain ones are going to clean the glass. Some are more prone to stay on top of the sand. Just having that mix to be everywhere in your tank and create that right. little army. Uh, another good one, emerald crabs. So these little guys, they're most famously known for bubble algae. And if you do have any bubble algae in your tank, I mean, they're probably your best bet. Generally, I would put one on each rock structure, just kind of keep it clean. And if you have one, I mean, they may even be taken care of it. You may never even see an issue. Now, in general, emerald crabs are safe as long as they're well fed. I have heard lots of stories about them being more on the opportunistic side if they're not well fed. So every once in a while in my nano, like I'll give him a little chunk of mysis or something to make sure he's nice and fit. But mm -hmm. if something dies or they could potentially go after, you know, a weak fish or something in your tank, a small one. So I have heard stories of that happening. So again, if they're hungry, they are a little more adventurous than what they go after. Now, one thing I don't know if I mentioned with the hermit crabs is these guys, again, same thing, kind of opportunistic. And they always want a bigger house. So their shell is their home, right? It's their little pad. Everyone wants the nicer, bigger mansion. So if they see a snail with a bigger shell, they're probably going to try and take it out and steal their shell. Mm -hmm. So if you do have some that die, or maybe your pet store, you get some extra shells for them. If you get a couple of big ones, it's good to have a few laying around the tank so they can move into a home and they're not as tempted to take out all your snails to upgrade their house. So something else to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, what else are some other good ones? Um, for starfish, this one... Okay, so we're talking about starfish. Uh, sand Sifting Stars is a good one. I have one of these in my tank. They do an awesome job. They're constantly going through... That is terrible advice. No, stop. Yes, they are. We're done. We're done. The sand Sifting Stars are awesome. <laughs> so if your tank is big enough, they're awesome. They need, a, they need a decent sized tank. You know, probably at least 50 gallons, I'd say, because they need to have a good sand bed to actually eat through. Um, they you, will kill your sand bed. Why they will they kill it? They will kill every single bit of life in the sand bed. That's their job. And your sand will look great while they do it. Yeah, you'll have this great <laughs> sand for a while, and then all of a sudden you'll see this weird algae all over your sand that never goes away. And you're like, why? Because there's no bacteria. There's nothing beneficial in the sand bed. A sand sifting starfish does not belong in the reef tank. You don't think so, eh? Not even remotely. Not Ooh. even sometimes. Interesting. Never. It is true. They will eat the bacteria in the sand. So yeah. You want to get them in fish-only systems. They're perfect for that because fish don't care. And that's the other thing. That's, when you're adding yeah. things to your tank, you have to consider your fish. Will they eat the invertebrate you're buying? Yeah. So like when you're buying an emerald crab, for example, do you have mm -hmm. a wrath that eats crabs? Yeah. It'll just eat your emerald crab, and there was a $7 dinner or $14 or whatever it costs. You know? Expensive snacks. Yeah. But no, I never recommend a sand-sifting starfish. So they will eat the microfauna and stuff. I still don't know about eating all the good bacteria. Though. I'm on the fence on this one. They'll get it all. It's all, right. all right. We're going to add this. in your tank now, we'll just check on your tank in a year and see what's left. But I had one in my last tank, too, and it was great. That's so. what I'm saying. Remember that big section of death you were dealing with? That was just cyano. All right. We're going to add this. We're going to come back to this one. This is you an can, interesting uh, do one. do some homework on that one. And I don't think you're going to. Matter of fact, here you go. My official answer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. We're, we're going to debate this one. I'm going to dig into this more because I've had them for many times and it. They do a good job, in my opinion, of stirring up the sand bed, so it's good. 
Uh, I have a sand sifting star as well. Yeah, brittle starfish are good too. Brittle starfish are awesome. Yeah. Um, I don't. Serpent starfish are the best. Yeah. So, so brittle starfish. I don't have any brittle worms in my tank, but I have a whole slew of brittle stars. I love little stars for whatever reason. I think they're cool. Mm -hmm. The worms are kind of creepy. You're talking about the, the little tiny ones. Yeah. I'm talking about you know a starfish. You know that's of a decent size. Mm -hmm. and you if you get a green brittle starfish it'll eat your fish yeah <laughs> so that's a very voracious one don't get that one the green ones but if you get a black one you'll be okay black yeah. or brown yeah but serpent starfish and mm -hmm. there's the harlequin starfish there's the red one mm -hmm. uh, i've got um a banded starfish in mine i and starfish live a long 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 time i have some in my tank that i've had since 2003 and they're still in my system to this day mm -hmm. yeah so that's, that's so far so good so far <laughs> 15 years so far so good mark you can keep it going you should um add a sand sifting star and then report back in a year and we'll see how it's still going <laughs> i like a living reef not a dead reef i've had them for so long and never had an issue so I, i'm still i'm still questioning this one well you know what you could do you could go into a fish store and you could ask the store owner or the shop you know, employee do you recommend a sand sifting starfish in a reef tank and see what they say because I walked into us while well, I was at a store. We were doing a club meeting there. Mm -hmm. And this cart went by with all this livestock. Yeah. And the employee was helping the customer who was a club member. Mm -hmm. And he's buying coral banded shrimp. He's buying, you know, anthias. He's buying, you know, frog spawn. He's getting all the stuff. And there's a sand sifting starfish in there. And I said, you're not buying that. And he's like, I was like, and he said, yeah, I was going to get that. I said, you can't put that in a reef tank. And then the employee said, what you have a reef tank oh i can't sell this to you and i was just like dude are you kidding me <laughs> that was so shady i just couldn't believe that and he was like oh i thought this was for a different tank and i'm just like wow he was just gonna bag it up to make the you know the 19 dollars they were gonna make or whatever uh, i but need no, to... no it's bad for reef tanks i okay i'm gonna dig into this one more okay so you said fish only system mm -hmm. so if you're What's the difference between if they're not if they live in the sand, they're not touching corals, what's the difference in your opinion of a reef versus a fish only? Well see, a fish only typically could be a system that's like predator fish mm -hmm. and they eat all the invertebrates. They eat the snails and the hermits and everything. So you have algae. Yeah. So if you want to have an algae free tank, you need things that you can put in the tank with these fish that won't eat it. Well, mm -hmm. most fish don't care about sand sifting starfish. Mm -hmm. And so they'll swim over it and that guy burrows in the sand, vanishes, comes up to the surface, scoots along. They don't, it's just not one of their delicacies, I guess you could say. No, fair enough. Okay. okay. <laughs> and I'm just telling you, when you put those, yeah. uh, the snails and stuff in that predator tank, they just become empty shells. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because all the fish True. take them off and it's meaty food. So that's why it's kind of tricky to actually put a cleanup crew in a fish only system. I can see that. Um, so if you don't like starfish, uh, harlequin shrimp <laughs> are hundreds of starfish, uh, one which is either a love hate or the Lestrina stars are super tiny little tiny starfish that usually at night you'll see them all over your glass. So I had a harlequin for a while. I rented my little assassin to clean those out. Uh, most Lestrina stars are perfectly fine. There are some that are said to eat corals. I don't really know how to tell them apart, but the ones I've had, I've never actually seen them hurt a coral. But either way, I just wanted to clear them out. So I put the assassin to work for about a month and he cleared out all of them in my tank. Yeah, Asterinas, it's kind of a, there is a strain that will kill your corals. And yeah. what I mean by kill, they'll eat some of a coral. It's not like they're going to go through and destroy your reef. They just kind of like go down the side of an SPS, chomp, 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 chomp. And mm -hmm. there's death. And you're like, oh, you're laying yeah. my little frag. But I found that the ones that I pulled out of my tank that were doing that, when I walked into the kitchen under normal lighting, they were kind of a greenish look. Mm -hmm. So I guess if it's a white one, it's okay. But if it's kind of a greenish beige color, it could be questionable. Yeah. Okay. But I've I've I went through that one phase at least 10 12 years ago where I had a problem. Mm -hmm. I did what you said, I put in harlequin shrimp. They ate everything. There was none. It was yeah. amazing. Oh, and then I awesome. thought, wow, I should buy a starfish to feed the harlequins. And I was like, where are the harlequins? And they were gone too because no food. Oh, I know. And I know. it just was so quick. I didn't catch it in time. But I have tons of asterinas in my reef to this day and I don't see any kind of damage happening. I have yeah. no fear of them at all. No, they're for they're for ninety nine percent of them are harmless. Yeah, but um, yeah, I ended up just giving away my harlequin after the month or two. It did his job. Yeah, because month got... or two, wow. Yeah, no, it's it probably I'm gonna guess four to six weeks, somewhere in that range, until it cleared yeah. up my tank. Yeah, 
Yeah, because it doesn't take long. It's amazing because astorinas are way up high and those shrimp are down on the sand and you're thinking, mm. well, I guess eventually those starfish will come down and then one day you're looking at your tank and there's no astorinas and you're just like, huh, yeah. <laughs> I can't find any. And then you're like, where are my shrimp? And you're like, oh, no. Yeah. The the amazing thing is, it's like they know. You'll see the harlequin here, and all the strino will be at the opposite of the tank. It's like they know where the death and carnage is, and they're like, run! <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the funny thing is, if you guys can see the little picture of the harlequin on top of the snail, he's kind of hitching a ride on the little conch snail. Mm -hmm. uh, conch snails are one. Do I have a better picture of one? I, I feel are very underrated. These guys are awesome cleaners. This is a orange lip fighting conch, I believe. Um, I have one in my Nano. I have three in my big tank. These guys are like relentless little cleaners that have that big little anteater nose and they're always mouth cleaning like everything in the tank. Like I think they're awesome cleaners. Uh, they do kind of dig in the sand a bit. They always clean the edge of the glass that a lot of things don't, which is a good one. Sometimes they'll stand up to reach up higher on yeah. the glass with their snout. It's, it's really fun. No, super cool, guys. Yeah. Um, another, oh, actually, a quick, couple quick questions. Can brittle, brittle stars harm an anemone? Not that I know of. No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't say that. so. No. Uh, Man, if it could, wouldn't they just eat all the Aptasia? Wouldn't that be awesome? Ah, Aptasia <laughs> control. The most popular one for that would be the peppermint shrimp. Mm -hmm. Now th these guys, they're pretty easy. I mean, I haven't bothered with one in my new tank. I used to have one in the old tank, but they were just kind of there as like contingency plan. It would eat mice and whatever I fed the tank at night. If there was Aptasia, I never saw them because it wouldn't munch them down. Now, there is some that look very similar that don't actually eat it, and they're not a true peppermint shrimp. I forget the name, but there is another species that's similar. So make sure you're getting a, a true proper peppermint shrimp if your goal is to eat Aptasia. I think you're talking about a camelback. I think so, yeah. They look similar, though. So I know I've seen people make that mistake or the fish store not knowing what it is. Now, interestingly, the camelback or camel hump or some kind of name like that, it looks like a peppermint, like you said. Those can actually eat acreating flatworms, according to the Zeovit people. Really? They did an article about this a year hmm. uh, years ago. and But the problem was you had to kind of do a thing. So you had to set up a separate little tank, like let's call it a quarantine tank. Mm -hmm. You filled it up with these camelback uh, shrimp, and then you take the infested coral, and you put it in that tank for a fixed amount of time, like 15 or 30 minutes, mm -hmm. no longer. Whatever that timeline they said, you did that. Yeah, because they would eat every single flatworm off of it. You could take it back out. <laughs> but if you left it too long, they ate the coral. Ah. So that's... I was like, oh, finally a use for this darn shrimp that people <laughs> accidentally buy. You know. That's awesome. So I... you would rotate your corals through it one after another each day. You put another one, just lower their population. Mm -hmm. Uh so Greg was just pointing out the burginas are better for aptasia. The, these are actually a nudibranch, which is known to eat um, aptasia. But it's one of those things, so they're supposedly like ruthless. They're awesome at it, but it is the only thing they eat. So it's one of those ones where you got to have a food source for it or, you know, pass it on to your friend once your tank's cleared out. Um, same with the, like, the harlequin shrimp we're talking about. It only eats starfish. So with some of these very specific diets, you got to make sure you kind of have a contingency plan to give that creature to a new home or another way of supplementing its food once they run out of that food source in your tank. We had a sea hare in our mm -hmm. club many years ago and sea hares eat hair algae and yep. it's as it looks like a bunny i actually think they're awesome i love them mm -hmm. and we had one in our club that would go from tank to tank to tank and his job of course is eat hair algae yeah and the owner that bought him gave him the best name ever his name was rerun <laughs> i was like i love that that is awesome and he he navigated through the club's tanks for quite some time before one day he finally died nice but that was really neat to share an animal like that as a club project to kind of keep hair algae at bay mm -hmm. okay actually i have a question for you sea hares versus cucumbers is there a big difference or are they more or less the same thing no totally different uh the seahorse ha sea hares seahorse mm -hmm. the seahorse go everywhere <laughs> <laughs> they get around, uh, do they? Sea hares, uh, they all through the rock work. They can get into a pump. It's possible. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll go up the glass and across the top if they want. Cucumbers, they tend to stay in the rock work and like to be anchored. Mm -hmm. They cucumbers process sand. Sea hares do not mm -hmm. process sand at all. Okay. They'll walk across it, but they're not yeah. going to eat anything on it. Mm -hmm. They're on a mission to go find yeah. basically hair algae, which is your best. Yeah. C cucumbers are awesome at clean sand beds. Uh, one of my buddies has one. His sand's always pristine. That thing does laps constantly. It looks like a big brown chunk of you know what but anyways <laughs> and, and that thing is always clean the sand bed so yeah my favorite is the tiger tail 
Hmm. And that's one that it's spotted and the body has like spikes. Where yeah, it, like, those are cool looking. Okay. And the cool thing is I bought one, I think it was in, I don't know, 2003 or 2004 or something like that. And I've got right now about 10. Yeah. <laughs> so they basically will tear themselves in half and then you have two cucumbers <laughs> and you don't have to keep buying more. And I had someone here the other day that was getting some frags and he says, hey, I want one of your tiger tails. Mm -hmm. And I thought, huh, okay. here one is. <laughs> so I took one out of my reef and gave it to him. But in a way it's good because he didn't have to go take one from the ocean. You know, he got it from a hobbyist that just grew it on his own in his reef tank, which is kind of awesome. Nice. Okay, uh, Kyle. Kyle was asking, can sea hares or cucumbers release a toxin into a tank? So some of them, I know cucumbers. I'm assuming it's probably the same for hares. If they die or they're stressed out, they can basically spit out their guts, which can be toxic to a tank. Now that being said, my buddy with the sea cucumber, his went into a power head, got chopped up, and now he has multiple because it somehow all the halves grew. Nothing in his tank had an issue out of it. Yeah. But I have also heard that they can, in theory, nuke a tank if they were to die or decompose and all their guts, all that stuff comes up. So Yeah, there's a few people out there on the forums that are, they just go around telling everyone, never get a cucumber, it's going to destroy mm -hmm. your tank. And they, it's their life mission to keep repeating this over and over to everyone. And it's like, it's the same three people on the planet. And I'm just like, really? I mean, mm -hmm. I've had cucumbers go through Vortec pumps. Some died, mm -hmm. some survived, and my reef never skipped a beat. Now, maybe it's because that's such a large water volume, I can get away with it. Mm -hmm. But there's people that have smaller tanks yeah. that have anemones go through pumps, and their mm -hmm. tanks don't die, too. So yeah. I'm not really sure how the toxicity level gets that high unless it's just a lack of filtration to handle it when it happens. Very well could be. His tank was a 90 gallon, so it's not massive, but it's a decent size. And yeah, he had zero issues, and he ended up with two and somehow split and yeah. made a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Siamese twins. Aw, how cute. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Actually, another good chunk. Uh, amphipods and copepods. Mm -hmm. They are one that people don't really think of as cleanup crew, but they're like an army of tiny little creatures all over your tank, and they're going to eat little algae spores and any little bits of uneaten fish food, detritus, all that type of stuff. Um, especially for refugium, I mean, they're going to gorge on all that stuff in there. You'll see them in the tank. On the plus side, free fish food. Ra yeah, yeah Rasses, mandarin, pipefish, they all just love those guys. And you replenish both of those. Yeah, I actually culture them, so I do dump them in randomly. But the refugium has a pretty solid stash usually going in it. Yeah. It's, if you guys have a refugium, it's fun to go down there with a flashlight at night and you just see all little creatures crawling around in there. Yeah. Okay, so what else we got? What are some other good creatures? Uh, so someone was asking about hair or algae earlier. One of the better snails for that one is Mexican turbo snails. Mm -hmm. Now, there is lots of snails that will eat it. In my experience, the turbo snails tend to do a better job of it, just because now the downside to them is they are bigger. They can mm -hmm. bulldoze over frags, or if you have something that's not glued down, they're probably going to knock it over. Right. Um, someone's asked, is there anything can you use to kill vermidit snails? I do not know on that one. Well, the basics is to break off the tube and glue it shut. Yeah. But Richard Ross just posted a video a few days ago that stuck on my... Milo's Reef page, where he took a dental tool and he got into the tube, broke it off, and then he got in the tube and hooked it and pulled the worm right out. And one of his fish ate the worm. So he actually yep. was feeding his fish, which is kind of neat. So he, mm -hmm. his solution was to literally remove it from the rock yep. uh, by yanking it out. And that takes some effort, you know, <laughs> because that's one after another. And there's but he was a determined. Mm -hmm. Persistence pays off. Uh, jump to late. Have we talked about urchins? Urchins. Let's talk about urchins. Uh, urchins uh, are awesome at eating algae. They're technically the long spine ones are a little more voracious and algae eating. I they're not very friendly if they poke you and stuff, and they tend to knock stuff over and be like a wrecking ball. So I tend to go for the smaller ones. Uh, mm -hmm. Personally, I've had like the pincushion style ones or the what are they called tuxedo urchins. Yep. Those guys are awesome algae eaters. Like awesome. Yeah, I just ordered nine of those tuxedos, and they're all gone. <laughs> yeah. They all are going to a customer tonight. I was like, oh, I wanted one, but I got mm -hmm. myself a diadema. So that's the long spine you talked about. Yep. The funny thing about the long spine uh, urchin that you need to know is when you're reaching in your tank, with its little eyeballs, it's watching all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what urchins do. Yeah. When you get near it, the eyeballs tell all the quills to point towards you, so that way you'll get stabbed in the knuckle. And really? Yeah, huh. they, they know where you're at. 
Interesting. So I don't think you can sneak up on an urchin because you can't. Can you see the Swap eyeballs on them? Uh, you know, I think what it is, and I could be wrong, I'm not an urchin expert, but mm -hmm. I think all those little tendrils that blow around, I feel like those are sensors. Maybe they're sensing light or shadow. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're eyeballs because I thought they were more like suction cups, you know, mm -hmm. like part of their gripping. Yep. I think there's some eyes somewhere in there. Maybe it's some other part of their body, but they literally know where you are. So yep. that's how you usually get stabbed. It's <laughs> not that you got – because you should be able to get near one and not get hurt because you saw where the coils were pointing. Mm -hmm. By the time your hand is in that spot, you're like ready to defend, defend, defend. <laughs> oh. like, oh. Yeah, I haven't been brave enough for the long one. They just seem too sketchy, but the little ones are awesome. Well, I got a cute one today, and yeah. it'll become big. But for now, it's going in the frag system. I've got uh, some – bad algae in that tank right now mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons i was motivated by a cleanup crew and yep. to be honest i hadn't bought a cleanup crew in forever mm -hmm. i looked at my records and it was like 2015 so that was three years ago nice and that was time to really stock up i'm putting in the frag system which is a 60 gallon i'm putting in the enemy cube which is a 60 gallon and i'm mm -hmm. putting in the 400 reef yeah so i needed critters for all three so i mean right there you're looking at 400 520 critters yeah. and that's pretty much what i'm left with after this order going to the other customers you know that i don't know somewhere around that ballpark unless someone else buys more That's but i don't sell livestock directly through my website it's just mm -hmm. one of those things where i do it for some locals yep no that's all right well you definitely got a good stock um so, okay before it scrolls by uh hank was saying bumblebee snails eat vermin snails i did not know that i do have one sole bumblebee in my tank so uh they're pretty I just didn't realize that was their their meal. That's interesting. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, me too. That's cool. that's a new one. Uh, someone else was also mentioning about urchins eating coralline algae. Yes, they definitely can eat it. They uh, can. Generally, if your tank's you know like a decent size, not like a nano, your coralline's going to grow faster than they're eating it, so it's not a big issue. But they definitely can. One actually really cool thing is that the little guy is a terrible photo because the color temperature is way off. But um, he was like a really bright pink one I used to have, and super cool guy. And in my old refugium, it was like had Harold, all the stuff in there. I put him down there within a week. That refugium looked like pristine, like that whole chamber, all the walls, everything just looked amazing. So, oh, there. Uh, quick all... warning about urchins you yep. don't want to like to mention is that if you have an acrylic tank, the urchin can leave bite marks on the acrylic. So, ah, good air, to know. maybe don't put it in an acrylic tank or make sure it's always on the rock work, which means you have to kind of like babysit it. But like if it goes up the overflow box and you don't care, that's fine. Yeah. But if you have a beautiful, very expensive mm. acrylic tank, you may not want urchins working their way up the front glass. Keep your glass clean so they have no reason to get on it. Good to know. I did not know that. Nice. Boku Juniors, thanks for your video about transferring upgrade tank. It helped me a lot. You're very welcome. And thank you for letting me know. I appreciate hearing that. And if you guys enjoy this, smash that like button. I always appreciate hey, it. Makes YouTube gods happy. There, does anything eat cyano? And uh, sea hares was one of those ones that I'd heard might do it. Mm -hmm. Also, the money cowrie can do it, but it's not a guarantee. It's more like they're helping, mm -hmm. not they're eliminating. They're not like going around like a vacuum cleaner, just getting it all. Yeah. Now, supposedly the crabs would eat cyano, but I kind of might agree with you more how they're just breaking it up so you're not seeing mats of it. Um, supposedly, sarah snails can eat cyano. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never necessarily had them both at the same time to confirm for sure yeah i haven't tried that one i don't know i, mm. I don't remember seeing a seraph go near cyan on my tank yeah i i've read it in a few places but yeah i, I can't say 100 percent on that one my simple solution is you know kimmy clean or red cyan rx those two products just get rid of it so yep it's all in three days instead of buying a cleanup crew <laughs> yep exactly <laughs> because you know certain certain problems we have in our tank you can buy livestock to help solve it. And yes, you can outweigh it if you want to wait three to six months for it to finally dissipate. You can do that too. But I'd rather just take care of that problem because it's a solvable problem in a matter of days. Yep. And once you're done, you're done. You don't have to keep thinking about it. <laughs> it's true. On my last tech, I literally sat there for like months and finally one day I was talking. It's like, why don't you just dose? I'm like, fine. And it was gone. Problem solved. I'm like, why did I wait so long? So it's true. Yeah. I've... Yeah, th I've had people tell me, you know, Mark, I tried to do it the natural way. I, I love when people say that. Yeah. And they're like, I waited and waited. Finally, I just did what you said, and it was gone. And, and then they say to me, why didn't I do this six months ago? Why didn't I just listen to you? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm just like, I understand <laughs> the fear of pouring something in your tank. But, God, we pour things in our tanks all the time. We hook up dosing pumps, dumping in magic chemicals. Every day, all, all day, work. every day. <laughs> I mean, look at Nopox, okay? Mm -hmm. That's an example. A lot of people use it, right? Mm-hmm. Or you buy GFO. Well, it's a jar of rust. You don't know where that <laughs> rust came from, but you're like, okay, 
and you use it. And people are buying those bricks and putting them in the sump. And like, that's going to make it better. And what's the brick made of? Yep. No one's like scraping it apart and putting it under a microscope and determining what it's made of. We're actually, half of us want to know what it is and we don't know. Mm-hmm. But they're like, you mentioned chemically, like, oh, no, no, I'm not putting that in my tank. No, no. Yeah, I've I've used it three times now and it's never been an issue. I'd actually legitly did it in my nano a couple weeks ago and I just did my big tank the other day because there's this one little area and it kept coming on the side of the rocks and it was annoying me like, that's it, can be clean. Yeah. And I, sh- I have no fear of recommending it. And there's going to be the occasional horror story that mm-hmm. happens. Usually, I mean, I've heard of this three times in 20 years where people put in the medicine in their tank mm-hmm. and it turned the water pink. Really? And that told me that they didn't take out the cyano first. You know, they literally just had blankets and poured in medicine, hoping it would just go away. And now you're at the point where it's so much, it's mm-hmm. a disaster zone. And, yep. you know, I mean, it's like FEMA should have been brought in to, like, tape down the area. And then, you know, they hoover it all out. And then they clean up the last of it. And that's really what you're supposed yeah. to do. Okay. Siphon it out and then treat the last of it. Yeah, since we're completely sidetracked here. Yeah, suck out all you can first so there's less impact on the tank of whatever it does. And the other big thing is... A lot of these chemical treatments, they absorb the, they take up the oxygen in the water, so you need to increase the oxygen. And I think people that have issues, it's likely because they're starving their tank from oxygen, yeah. from adding this bacteria, which is as it grows and populates, it's going to consume that oxygen. It's going to lower your pH. You're going to add more CO2 sure. to the water. So I always just take the cup off my skimmer and let it overflow because then you're mm-hmm. adding tons of bubbles. In the nano, I just put a little wooden air stone by the power head and it looked like a jacuzzi for three days. But at least I know I'm like caking the tank in oxygen and it's not going to be an issue. And that's always I mean, we're, really, we're not being sidetracked at all because we're we are part of the cleanup crew too. Yeah, we are. That's true, actually. <laughs> we are the giant elements of the cleanup crew. Uh, so dosing chemically won't affect a new tank ugly stage progression. If cyano is in your tank, that's for that. But um, usually the ugly stage is diatoms, which is more of like a light brown type right. of stuff that coats your sand bed. There is certain snails and stuff that will eat that. However, it's one of those things that will go away on its own. So. That's just part of the normal three first three month phase. You just live through it. Yep, exactly. You can toothbrush it off. You can do some siphoning, but it will go it's away. It's unavoidable. Just don't run your lights too long. That that'll help a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and having a cleanup crew to kind of those hermit crabs. Everyone's scared of hermit crabs. I just bought four hundred for my tank. I mean, hermit crabs are awesome. They're gonna go around picking, and the smaller the hermit crab, the safer they are. Agreed. Because when they're itty bitty, mm-hmm. they have little tiny mouths, and they're just picking at stuff. But you get a big, hungry, hairy-looking one. Yeah, he's gonna start ripping crap apart and killing stuff. You know, so yeah, I like to get tiny ones. And blue legs are more aggressive than red. So I always mm-hmm. tell people about red legs, but red legs cost more, so you can't get them. Mm. And uh, you know, unless you want to spend more. Or orange is really cool too. I got a fluorescent <laughs> orange one. He's super cool. One. Listen to you. I got a orange one. <laughs> I just bought him because I like the color. But, right. Uh, you got yeah. him for luck, not for work. <laughs> he, he pulls his weight. He's always picking at something. <laughs> Fine. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yeah. I get it. I have bought my cleanup crew, and then I added one Halloween crab for fun. You know, mm-hmm. I, mean, I get it. You know, we want pretty things. Yeah. Uh, so Billy was saying, Sand Tiger Conch is my main man in the tank. Yeah, I love conches. I think they're completely underrated. I don't hear people talk about them very often, but for me, their little workhorses are always cleaning. And they're recommended one per every two square feet of sand. Good to know. So if you have, uh, you know, a very little sand, and you put a bunch of them in, you're going to starve them out. They're not going to make it. Yeah. So you want to make sure you have enough sand bed for them to devour. <clears throat> yep. Also, they devour, they bury themselves in the sand for a while and just vanish. Mm-hmm. And I used to dig them out because I got mad. I was like, why aren't you working? What are you doing? <laughs> and I think, I mean, I'm guessing. I don't know this for a fact. But I l- believe what they do when they bury themselves for three weeks is they're growing their shell. Mm-hmm. They make it a little bit bigger. And then they come out again and they get back to work. So if yours just kind of vanish for a long time, doesn't mean they're dead. They might be busy making their shell. Mm. That's my theory. Yep. Uh, so Kyle's asking, will hermit crabs eat hair algae? Yes, yes, they will. Yes. Matter of fact, I remember when I had a bunch of snails in my tank and I had a hair algae problem in the anemone cube, Mm -hmm. I, uh, called the fish store owner and said, I don't get it. Why do I still have hair algae? And he said, how many hermits do you have? And I said, none. He said, you forgot about those? Like, yeah, I guess I did. (laughs) And so I put some in and I was filming and there they were just picking away at it. I was like, wow, so simple. How did I forget? My only one complaint is that they tend to take out my snails. Mm-hmm. The they blues. Can. Yeah, especially if they're hungry. If they're not getting enough algae, which my tank has been pretty good at not getting much algae, so then they're like, hmm, snail sounds delicious. I want your shell. <laughs> so I, I've shied away from hermit crabs now, and I do more just sticking to the, whatchamacallit, 
like snails and that type of stuff. I have a few in there, but yeah. more more decorative than armies yeah. that I used to. Yeah, again, the smaller they are, the less likely they want a snail shell because the shell is way too big. Yep. Uh, someone uh, was just asking, does anyone use a horseshoe crab? I have never had one of those, but I believe they're the little funky ones, the flat bottom that go more through your sand bed. Yeah, those things are super active. They would just bury half your stuff you care about on the sand bed. If you like chalices and acans and fungias, forget them. They'll yep. be gone. <laughs> they won't make it. <laughs> no, I lost it in the comments, but someone was asking about uh, a lumware blenny. Again, those guys are awesome at hair algae. They're probably one of the best blennies for eating them. Mm -hmm. Um, another big one is your fish. I mean, those guys put to work. Blennies in general are, will eat hair algae. And it's, uh, the, the turf algae is hit or miss, but a lot of them will generally eat the hair algae. Uh, the turf algae is kind of the shorter one. This is kind of like a green fuzz. I don't know if anything eats bryopsis, though. We wish. Uh, yeah. Fox face is. Fox face? Fox okay. face can work on its yep. own. Because I got this guy years ago. He said, Mark, I'm moving out of state and I want to put all my corals in your tank. And then in a month and a half, I'm going to go ahead and have you ship my corals to me because my tank will be set up. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. And he showed up at my house. He said, Mark, you've got nowhere to put my corals. And I was like, no, my reef is full. <laughs> so he said, well, do you mind if we re aquascape your tank? And I was thinking, what? But he gave me these huge rocks and we put them in to put all his corals on and we put more of his corals on the sand bed. And all of a sudden I had this bryopsis problem. Oh. And I'm like, oh. And I called him up to complain. <laughs> And he said, oh, yeah, uh, well, I have a fox face, so no big deal. I said, well, I don't. And he said, that's a problem. And so I ended up fighting Barobsis for like six months in my tank because of trying to help someone out. Oh, that sucks. And I ended up using lettuce nudibranchs, yep. which will work on it. The problem, and you mentioned these earlier, but you didn't really go into them. First of all, they are like a fluff of mm -hmm. life. They are so light, mm -hmm. and they have no thickness to them they have no girth they have no heaviness yeah and so they you can put them over the bryopsis and they will instantly go right on and start eating and then the next day you look and they're stuck to a power head oh. and so you turn off the power head and you yep. peel it out of the grate and you hold this thing and the flow is just knocking on your fingers and you're like grabbing it and you're like trying to put you know like a cotton ball back in place it's hilarious <laughs> they're, but they're, they're really neat but then the next day you find them in the refugium so you take them off the macro and you carry them to the top of the tank and you put it back on the bryopsis yeah and they're neato but they're kind of dumb in that regard they go everywhere instead of staying where you need them so of you course. have to kind of babysit them can't be too easy uh so someone was just asking a good cleanup crew for a 25 gallon so in a nano in the staria sales little guys with the little snorkels like come through the sand bed i'd probably do a handful of those guys a couple of those and i'd probably do an orange lip fighting conch personally because i think they're cool how many is a handful is that 25 in the Staria snails what no a small handful <laughs> a couple a, a couple baby hands this because I don't want to tell them too many. Um, I would probably personally, I probably add like three of those, and I probably add like a fighting conch, and then all those guys will mix up your sand bed. Yeah, I like your your little doll hands you were talking about there for a handful. Just a little handful. <laughs> <laughs> and my chat window froze. Like if someone asks me, you know, would you like some M and M's? I put out both hands. You're like, yes. And that <laughs> I don't want three or four. Just. Fill me up. You know, I'll take it all. I love it in my nose. <laughs> They're delicious. It's very sure. Uh, what else haven't we talked about? What's some other good ones for cleanup crew? Uh, what would you forget to talk about? I don't know. I'm just scrolling through my little list of random things. Uh, Sarah snails. Those guys are kind of like Nostargus, but they more stay on top of the sand bed. They can go on rocks or other areas. Most of the time, they just kind of go along the bottom of your tank. They usually find them on the glass. Yeah, they can. Sarahs love the glass, and the baby Sarahs like to do the bottom inch of the glass. Yeah, those guys are awesome for the bottom. Uh, Neurite snails, same thing. Those guys are more of a film, I find. Like, they're more surface rocks, glass. No, yeah. oh, my chat is frozen. Why can't I read the comments now? Can't be too easy, can it? No, I have to read them to you. Thank okay, you. Okay, they're going too fast. Forget it. Let me know if there's any good ones. <laughs> no, chew, chew, chew. It's okay. I'm loading my own page. There They're all go. talking to each other. They don't even care about what we're talking about. I know. That happens. Which snails and shrimp and hermits won't wrasses eat? Mm. There you go, Devin. It, de go. It, it depends on the type of wrasse, to be honest. Like, I've had a red chorus wrasse who was a bugger and would eat any snail. Um, I currently have a leopard wrasse as well as a melanaris wrasse. And they 
I don't see them touch snails. I see the odd shell, and I think it's the Melanaris. I don't think the leopard does it. So, yeah. Melanaris is also a great pest eater. Like earlier, you're talking about um, flatworms and other things. Like those guys for sure will eat flatworms. Like they'll devour. They'll check all your corals. Like they're awesome to have to keep pests out of your tank. Yeah, but they the can't. Smaller the better. So yeah. they can fit into the corals. Once they get become big fish, they can't get in. Mm -hmm. They no longer help with the pests because you can't get to them. Yep. China. Someone mentioned Crocus. That is an awesome snail to get compared yep. to their Astria counterpart. Because Astria is you have to keep flipping them right side up or they die. Yep. Trochus can actually flip over. over. Yes. They have skills. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> skills. Uh, Babylon snails are pretty cool from Ravenclaw. I have no idea what a Babylon snail is. I have to Google this one. That sounds familiar. They look familiar. Is that like a super Tongan? Is that what he's talking about? Babylon snail. Oh, they look like... um. I feel like I have one of these. I just didn't know what they were called. Uh, one person asked, can triggers live with snails like the blue throat? Yep. I think the blue throat can because the mouth is so small. Blue throat is 100% like the one of the most safe reef safe triggers. I have one in my tank. He's been, other than trying to jump out, he's been a model citizen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. So no over the big issues there. If you have one, make sure you cover your tank. He, he's kind of skittish, like the lights go on and off quickly. Sometimes he'll try and take a little leap. Uh, but yeah, he's been zero issues. I haven't seen, I've never personally seen him touch anything in the tank in a negative way. He just cruises around and plays in the flow. And if you were going to do a trigger in a reef, that's the one I'd recommend. Uh, let, lettuce nudies for Bryopsis. Huh. Good to know. Have you actually tried that one there, Dramedy? These uh, Babylon snails look a lot to me like Super Tongans. Could be the same thing with a different name. Wouldn't surprise me. It's kind of a, this one's really pretty. Yeah. We should get this one. Go on the live aquarium. Let's visit the website and see how much it costs. Okay. This one is $6. Nice. Um, any starfish you'd recommend? Is a starfish for cleanup or just for looks, Frank? One question. Uh, has anyone mentioned bristle worms? Uh, not overly. Some people have love-hate relationships with bristle worms. In general, they're harmless cleanup crew. They're little scavengers. It's, a lot of people get creeped out by them and try and rid their tanks. But other than potentially poking you, if you're getting down in there, they don't. I don't think there's any harm in them. At the end of the day, it's just another cleanup crew member. I like the stars, personally. I think the stars are cool. The worms are kind of, eh. Wait. Why is Dr. Welsh recommending a chocolate chip starfish to Frank? Chocolate, chocolate chip starfishes starfish. are not reef safe. I know. Why is he saying that? They will eat your coral. Do not put them in a reef tank. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely don't want that in your reef tank. Corals will become snacks. Um, a good light schedule to reduce algae. Okay. If you have algae in your tank, you it's either you're feeding too much, you're not exporting enough, or you have way too much light and it's just so algae is photosynthetic so too much light plus nutrients generally equals algae so if you are having big issues i mean reducing your light's intensity or duration can definitely help by how much be specific help him or her <laughs> look at that face <laughs> by how much yeah, 27 percent three hours a day i mean what are you saying what are you recommending i would like to channel? i need to know what it is to go for that <laughs> well okay let's just assume that they're running the lights 12 hours a day because it seems like every light manufacturer sets an automatic schedule of 12 insane hours ah all right Where so i recommend seven to nine hmm. so for I, my day. I recommend eight hours of like peak intensity but i also have a nice ramp up and down on either side of it so that's okay. less intensity as it comes that, that's what i personally always do on my takes right so this person has an algae problem so you would say instead of eight hours of peak intensity maybe four hours Depends on what it is now, yes. But I would definitely try and shave at least two hours off, see what it does. Um, probably feed less, just so you're not putting as many nutrients in. And see if you can export more of it, so maybe more water changes. Now, actually, another question I had er earlier was they were like, oh, I have this algae problem, but my nitrates my phosphates are one. Which sometimes people don't necessarily consider this, but if your tank's full of hair algae, your hair algae is consuming those nutrients as it grows. So you're kind of getting like false readings. Like, yes is low, but it's because your algae is growing and absorbing on a daily basis. So you want to manually remove as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, especially the water change, you can get some little curves to help you. But generally, you know, when you're doing a water change, just grab those tufts and let it suck it out the hose. 
Also, you want to take your power head and you want to blow off the entire rock work. Just make a storm of crap and let your filter socks or your Clarisy or your skimmer mm -hmm. export as much as you can. Of course, you, know, you can do a water change too at that point and really pull out some yep. brown water. Mm -hmm. But cleaning off the rock is really important because the algae that's on the rock is feeding off the detritus that's sitting right on it. Mm -hmm. So get rid of their source and you're going to start starving it out. And then yep. your cleanup crew will do the rest. Yep. Nope, exactly. Uh, also, feeding less or feeding every day helps. Yep. Yeah. So basically, adding less nutrients to the tank is, you know, the first thing you should start doing. And then manually move as much as possible. And if you need, you can get some little helpers, depending on what type of algae you have. Uh, will it be safe to add a fighting conch snail to my 40 gallon with two turbos and two Nosarius? Yes, I think you would be fine with that. You need more snails and hermits, Virginia. It's a 40 gallon. You've got room for 35 more critters. <laughs> I don't know about this logic. Don't go too crazy. Just slowly add them you until... Are, you are cheating these people out of the fun of cleanup crews. Yeah, but if you add too many and they run out of food, then what happens? They die. Are they really going to run out of food? You put food in every day. You just talked about this. We're feeding the tanks. They'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Don't get I too mean, crazy. You can, you, can go, you can go less, yes. Mm -hmm. But if your tank is a problem, deal with it. And if and they're going to dwindle down anyway, because like you said, the hermits are eating some snails, so now you have less already. <laughs> Right. I'm avoiding cannibalism. <laughs> oh, man, you're so strict in your tank. I know, I know. I run a tight shift. But there's also no algae, so it's working. Uh -huh. Cyanide is the only thing I've had to deal with. Yeah. Other than that, it's been no big issue. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Buying fish that eats algae. Tangs, blennies, 100%. Um, like fox faces, dwarf angels, tangs, blennies, all these type of fish are basically little workers in your tank. And they're going to graze and poke at a little bits of algae and stuff on your tank. So, I mean, you could have a huge issue and it could be completely masked by your fish eating the little bits that pop up. So, you know, if your fish ever disappear one day, all of a sudden you're like, boom, here's an issue. So, tang. The best one is the bristle tooth tang. Yeah. It's nice. a workhorse of a tang. It just literally is constantly eating. And I've got a yellow eye coal with a white tail. It's some kind of, I call it a hybrid and people say, it's not a hybrid. I'm like, okay, well, it's got a white tail. No other fish does. Mm -hmm. And that guy is always taking mouthful of sand and spitting it out. He's working on the glass. And if I don't clean the glass right there, so you'll see like kiss marks all over the front of the tank. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> really? He's constantly, constantly eating, eating, eating. So a bristle tooth tang. If you can put that in your tank, you should get that. Huh, good to know. I've never had one of those. Okay, so you are the man for acrylic. And you're also mentioning that urchins can potentially leave marks in your acrylic. Mm -hmm. Is there any other algae eaters that someone with an acrylic tank should be cautious of? No, I think your urchin is the only one that does damage. Okay. The other thing that might happen to an acrylic tank, and I've seen it happen in the past, is fish do it. Mm -hmm. Fish will scratch the acrylic. <laughs> there was a guy, um, he has this beautiful reef tank. His username online is ReefKeeper2. Mm -hmm. So R-E-E-F-K-E-E-P-R-2. Okay. And he got Tank of the Month twice because his tank is so amazing. Nice. And... He's in Boston, and he has this beautiful, gorgeous tank, and he spends every winter cleaning the acrylic. I mean, literally polishing out every scratch. Oh, wow. Nice. And once it's all cleaned off, he had added this fish, um, some kind of an angel, I think it was. It has these spines on its cheekbones, and it would flash the glass. Maybe it was fighting its reflection. It scuffed up his beautiful tank with like oh. a thousand little cuts, and he said, I just fixed this tank, and this new fish just ruined it. And he was really, I was visiting at the time, and the timing was horrible, you know, I mean, just, he was so mad, because it takes weeks to polish out scratches on acrylic in a living reef. Oh, it's yeah. It's a big, arduous process. Now, could you do it while the tank's filled, or do you have to drain it and buff it? And... No, he did it with the tank full. He, he's got this crazy system. He's got this thing from the 70s called a diatom filter, mm -hmm. and... It's a glass jar like you might make iced tea in, mm -hmm. and there's a motor on top of it, screws on, and inside this thing was a ridiculously pleated filter like an accordion would have. And he would hook that up to his reef, and then he'd be sanding the inside of the tank with a cleaner magnet with like some kind of a sanding pad on it. Yeah. He'd work his way across, and all that dust and shavings would go into the filter, 
Hmm. And his diatome filter would trap every particulate mm -hmm. better than any filter sock ever could. Yeah. And then he would go to the next gray down of sandpaper and then the next, or maybe goes up, whatever, the, however you do that. Because I don't, mm -hmm. I work with new acrylic, I don't work with used. And so you, I think, yeah, a smaller grid is bigger and then the higher the number, the more fine it becomes. Yeah. So he would switch up and up and up until he had a pristine tank. Huh. And his walls of his tank were gorgeous when he was mm -hmm. done. And it was a every winter project. That's a lot of work. Oh yeah, but it was his hobby, so he loved it. That's fair. It's a, it's a love hate with acrylic because one, it's nice that you can polish it. You know, polishing glass is not easy, but on the right. flip side, it's easier to scratch it. So it's more like the I don't know. I'm always, I'm always back and forth on it. I don't yeah, know if I would do an true. acrylic tank. An acrylic tank is crystal clear. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, it's like looking through a block of water. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's like Starfire glass, which is why all my tanks are made of Starfire. Yeah. Nice. Me too. Good choice. <laughs> Uh, Vortex is amazing. I don't know that it's, I probably missed the beginning, but yes, they're awesome. Uh, Bristletooth just eats algae when I feed the fish. Top notch, any food. <laughs> Reef hmm. It doesn't eat any of the food. It only eats the stuff in the tank. That's interesting. Hmm. I like acrylic. Acryl Rogue Aquarium has to. He just bought a ginormous acrylic tank. He has no choice. Yes, he does. 800 <laughs> gallons. You got to get that baby filled. I want to see this build. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, he's got a YouTube channel. Yes, he does. So check him out if you haven't already. And if you haven't checked out Mark's, check out his channel too. He's full of useful information. I know nothing. He pretends to Someone know nothing. Someone said, can I add a bunch of clean crew at once? I'm like, yes, that's what we've been talking about. Put them all in. <laughs> Don't be scared of cleanup crew. It's awesome. Keep that tank pristine. Uh, okay, so do not dip corn, uh, brand new Ooh. cleanup crew. No, no, Don't no. Don't dip no. them in any kind of chemicals. They're and, not corals. Uh, do not dip. Right. And I don't even quarantine, but what I do is I, I inspect them. I mm -hmm. look at them. Um, I'm not busting out a magnifying glass. I'm not doing anything crazy, but I look at each one. If there's something weird, which almost never happens, because like I said, they're so hungry. They're eating everything off each other. They're usually pristine, but it's possible to get something that has a pest. Maybe, but the odds are slim to none. Yeah. So I wouldn't be fearful of them. And I would just, you know, like if you got a bunch of peppermint shrimp, look at the shrimp. Mm-hmm. If the side of their body has this weird thing, that could be an isopod. You know, you don't want to put that in your tank now. Mm -hmm. So make sure that shrimp looks completely like a shrimp with no extra little features. Mm -hmm. I have. <laughs> and yeah, put it right in the tank. Yeah. I have had snails that they've had um, like algae or algae or something on it. And I've just like little toothbrush and scrubbed it off. So I'm not adding that to my tank. But aside from that, that's the extent I've ever done with it. I remember someone did a presentation at MACNA a few years ago. And when they get the cleanup crew, they had a water pick. And they would water pick their critters. Yeah. Like huh. with salt water. Like, yeah. Ch -ch -ch -ch. They would just like pummel their little bodies and then they put them in. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like I said, yeah. I, I just put them in the tank. And it's not a drip acclimate either. I don't even recommend that with cleanup crew. You basically just cut open the bag, you pour in some tank water. Basically, as soon as the water's volume is doubled in the bag, put them in your tank. Mm -hmm. It's really about temperature, not so much about salinity changes. Yeah. Uh, so Ryan was asking, would you put a clam in a clam in as a cleanup crew? So the clams aren't going to eat algae, but they will filter water. They have a little vent inside, and they're literally just sucking water and spit it out, and they'll take little bits of particles and stuff out of the water. So they'll help keep your yeah, water clean. But to have a lot of clams to justify filtration would be a stretch. Not I have, many people can do that. I have actually seen somebody where they had like 20 clams in their sump right. as like their filter. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's the trick. Yeah. Is Starfire glass actually softer than normal glass? Yes, it is. It's not... I don't know how quantifiable it is softer, but in theory, it scratches easier. I'll show you guys a trick. So, I don't even know what I got in my drawer. I just pulled things out. But <laughs> I just use plastic credit cards and club membership cards and whatever's expired, you know, health insurance cards, anything to scrape my Starfire glass clean so I never scratch it. I don't trust metal on it. And whenever hmm. I do, I get a scratch. Interesting. So I always use plastic. And Flipper just came out with their new Flipper scraper that uses credit cards, key cards yeah. and credit cards. And so hmm. I've been using that a little bit. It's been nice. So my tank is Starfire. And I have only use the Flipper blade. Mm -hmm. I, I don't use the scrub pad because to me that is just a you know two inch by four inch chunk of surface area that could trap a snail, like a baby snail mm -hmm. or a grain of sand or something. Now, if you only use the blade, like, obviously, you got to make sure it's not, like, rusted or pitted or anything. I'll leave mine in the tank. Maybe I shouldn't. Who knows? But it, it only has the blade and those two little nubs touching your glass. And I've had mm -hmm. zero scratches from that. So that, that's what I do on mine. That's good. 
I just figure less surface area, less chance of anything ever getting trapped in there. Yeah, it's true. Yep. Oh, by the way, if you're using a cleaning magnet and you have astorinas in your tank, don't let an astorina get between your cleaning magnet and your acrylic tank because the the surface of an astorina starfish is like sandpaper. Mm. And I was just cleaning my, my glass in my tank, like doo doo doo, you know, on, on a, an acrylic tank I'd made. And I saw the astorina and I thought it was a knock it off with the magnet. Mm -hmm. Nope. He got stuck in there and I'm just Ooh. like scrubbing away, not paying attention. And I saw all these scroll marks everywhere and I was like, oh. I was so mad at myself. Oh, that would hurt. Yeah, make sure they're not in your way. <laughs> no kidding. Yikes. Uh, I see some tropical scallops and see. So, actually, fun fact, completely random. So, we, um, he had a copper band butterfly, one of my buddies, and he was feeding it, uh, what are they called? Some kind of fresh clams. I have some. What are they called? Anyways. Scallops? No. Mind blanking. Anyways. Muscles. No. It'll come to me. Anyway, so he was feeding them to the copper bland, but and he got them from they're like on ice from the seafood market. And um they were put him in his tank. He's like, some of them are alive. So he's just like, you put him in a sump to like as like a water filter. He's like, Yeah, they last about a couple of weeks, a month, and they finally because they're they're different water climates, right? So it didn't last long yeah. term, but water temperature is probably too hot for them. They might be scallops. Yeah. You don't oh. think it's any of those? I have to go. I I have some in my freezer. I'll look later. I throw them in for a treat once in a while for the fish. I freeze them. <laughs> I do. I do freeze them. I throw them in. Makes them happy. That's funny. If you guys enjoyed the stream, smash that thumbs up. Smash that like button. And if you have any other questions, let us know. I think I, I'm i running out of cleanup crew that I can think of off the top of my head. All the common ones oh, I think we've nailed. I haven't checked. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's all good. I'm sure there's hundreds of things you didn't mention. Oh, there probably is. The common ones, though. Uh, I've seen videos. Any tips on how to qu quarantine porcupine puffers? Heard they're sensitive to copper. At the same time, a little itch prone. I have never had a porcupine puffer, but I wouldn't. I would assume it's the same as quarantining any other fish. I don't think there's any special requirements for them. Well, if he says copper is not an option, that is the only thing I would worry about. Mm -hmm. Diamond spotted sand sifter eats hair algae off the rocks. Nice. Uh, what are you feeding the blue throat? Uh, my blue throat, I put nori in my tank daily. So I put a half sheet of nori in my tank every morning, morning, afternoon. And then at night, I usually feed frozen. It's usually PC mysis. Sometimes I'll mix it up with other food. I have pellets once in a while thrown for a random snack. But my daily standard is nori in the morning, which basically every fish in the tank eats it, and then frozen food at night. And then One cool critter that we didn't mention that I think is a nice part of the cleanup crew if you are trying to control bristle worms mm -hmm. is going to be the arrow crab hmm. and the arrow crab's really pretty tiny little claws a little blue gloves yeah <laughs> and they will basically get the extra bristle worms that are just too dominant in your face mm -hmm. like when you see thousands he will bring it down to hundreds now is it true that they can potentially capture fish if they're hungry I've never had that happen, and I had mine in a 29 gallon where the fish didn't have anywhere to go. Okay. I've never lost fish to an arrow crab. Perfect. I actually, the coral bend and shrimp chase the arrow crab around the tank. Nice. So those two don't like each other that much, which was surprising because mm -hmm. they're, I, don't, I just didn't think they'd have a problem, but sh shrimp and crab, not even the same family, but they yep. were, you know, the, the coral bandit was the aggressor. Yeah. So huh. that one's Interesting. Little, and the funny thing about the coral bandit shrimp is it's considered a cleaner shrimp. Really? It will actually clean off fish. You know, it, it's possible in the nature they will clean, even though we typically don't look at them that way. Huh. We look at them more like cool. entertainment and ornamentals, you know. On the ornamental front, the collector crabs are kind of funky. Like the hairy version of an arrow crab, and they, they'll collect little shells and, like, put all over their body. I've seen some, they got little zoos, yeah, the frags crab. on them and stuff. Yeah, they're kind of funny to yeah. see. Uh, would you recommend a sand sifting goby for a smaller tank, 25 and below? Uh, that's questionable for me. Because they get most of their food out of the sand bed, and a 25-gallon maybe on the small side to have enough food to sustain them long term. I feel like you might clean through your sand bed fairly quickly. What's your thoughts? What's the smallest you put a sand sifting goby in? I don't like those fish. They uh, bury everything. Again, I'm all about keeping corals alive, and mm -hmm. anything that's on the substrate is going to be buried. Yeah. But those fish do. I mean, they constantly move sand. Mm -hmm. So if you just want clean sand and all your corals are up on the rock work where they're safe, then okay, yeah, I get one. But if any, you have anything on the substrate that you like, <laughs> then get used to not having it much longer. 
Yeah, they literally, well, it's hit or miss. I've seen some that are really considerate and they'll like sift out of their mouth as they're on the ground. Others will swim halfway up the tank and it's like, whoosh, and you have a sandstorm in the tank. I like that you describe them as considerate. That is awesome. <laughs> well, it's true. If they if they drop it an inch, it's not a big deal. But if they drop it like six inches and the powerhead's just creating a dust storm, yeah, then... It'll just spread it, yeah. But yeah, if yeah. they'll bury a clam, they'll bury, you know, an Acan, they'll bury a chalice, uh, like I said, fungias. You get an LPS down there that are really small little frags, and the next day you just have a dead skeleton because it was buried under some sand for 12 hours. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that quick. Yeah, very true. Uh, are you still using the coal box dosing pump? Not at the moment. I do have that little baby tiny one I'm going to try using to feed my phyto, feed phytoplankton to my pods, actually, culture. So that's going to be my next little test for that guy. Uh, Somebody asked if he can use sand that was left outside. Yes, you can definitely wash it all out and yep. make it brand new again because it's just sand. Yep. Basically, the worst that would happen is you'd have atmosphere, dirt, and dust and stuff landing on it. Rinse. All good. Uh, another tip for rinsing out sand too, if you take have an old pillowcase or something, put it in a pillowcase and you could just run in the garden hose through it or whatever or inside your shower or whatever for a while and just let it rinse and rinse so get all the dust, all that stuff out of it. In your shower? Really? If it's, if it's winter time. Do you summer use time is outside. Thread count pillowcases or what I would recommend a low thread count for particle <laughs> flow. <laughs> You wouldn't use the pillowcase that J-Lo loves? <laughs> <laughs> the water just like stays in the pillowcase. You're like, what the? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, haven't, I haven't tried that. Someone mentioned that to me last year about the pillowcase. That's interesting. I, did, I did it for the new tank because normally I just do it with water. But yeah. then that way it's an easy way to get the sand out and you can let yeah. it dry kind of in the pillowcase. If it's summertime, I mean, throw in the sun, it'll dry out in a day. And while we're talking about sand, uh, a helpful tip I want to tell you guys so you don't do what I did do not put the clean sand in a bucket and then carry the bucket to your tank and pour it into your brand new tank because the metal handle will scratch the hell out of your front glass in like a nanosecond. And then you have a permanent etch in the front of your viewing pane for the rest of your life. So if you're going to move sand, I would highly recommend that you put it in basically like uh, shopping bags, you know, like those white kitchen trash bags or something like that. Mm -hmm. Smaller amounts, easy to lift, pour it out, nothing scratchy. Yeah. You know, so you don't damage your tank. Good tip. Did this happen to your current tank? Uh, it was the last one. Oh, okay. Version, version 1.0. Yeah, okay. it was brand new tank day one of putting in the sand, and I scratched the front of my tank before the livestock went in, and it was there for 13 months, every single day of my life, until that tank leaked. Oh, yikes. I um my One of my first bigger tanks I bought used, and it had all these little micro scratches in it, and it mm -hmm. bugged me all the time. Now I'm like so CD about scratches, it scarred me for life. Yeah, me too. And, you know, my tank now is five years old. This is version 2.0. Mm -hmm. And I have maybe, there's maybe six scratches on the tank, and I know where every single one of them are. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just doing the glass. I'm like, there's one. Mm -hmm. There's the other. You know, it's like, mm. But, you know, it's to think I only have that many scratches in five years is pretty impressive. You know, That's not, not hundreds or, like you said, thousands of micro scratches. That would be. Yep. Oh, and one guy, and this is the craziest story. One guy had bought a brand new tank. Mm-hmm. And it had that sticker on the front, like, Marine Land, made for, for you, for your livestock, or whatever. You know, some advertising decal. Mm -hmm. And he pulled it off and left all the glue behind. So he got the the uh, the Scotch green pad scrubby and scrubbed to get that glue off and scrubbed scratches into the glass. Right oh. there in the top, right, the top left corner of the tank forever. Was it glass or acrylic? It was glass! And that Yikes. scrubby just destroyed his glass. And I was I was like, what happened up here? And he goes, I was trying to remove a sticker. And I'm like, with what? And he said, the green Brillo pad? And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm amazed at scratched glass, shocked. to be honest. I don't know. I'm, I, you know, you can use vinegar and water. You can use Windex and a razor blade. You know, there's lots of ways to get that glue off. But I'm never going to say use a 3M pad on glass. Okay. <laughs> because of what I saw happen to him. No matter what is on glass, I just use a fresh stainless steel razor blade and make sure the yep. glass is wet. If it's wet, you should not scratch. If it's dry, there's a risk, right? But as long as you wet the surface, you should be fine. And just yep. one quick swipe and it's clean. That's always yep. been my go-to. OCD much? Heck yes. I am so OCD about scratches. They're like yep. my nemesis. Yeah, he's saying it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> No, it's a good thing. <laughs> you, know, you should be awesome. proud to have a scratch-free tank. Yeah, he's saying it. You're OCD. I'm like, you're saying it like it's a bad thing. It's like, no, it's totally good. Yep. Happy New Year to you too, Ben. 
Uh, Yellowhead sleeper goby is not considerate. No, yeah. most of those sleeper gobies are the spotted ones. The majority of them will sw swim up and create the sandstorm. I wonder where they're called sleeper gobies anyway. When do they sleep? I mean, what's, what's, why, why that name? Seriously, they're active, they, you know? They don't. They just sandstorm your corals. <laughs> those liars, that's yep. what they are. Hey, Ben. Yep. Uh, Coral Bandit has set up a cleaning area for fish. I see my fish visit the station. Yeah, this is really cool to see. Yeah. I, I tried to take one the other day. My powder blue swims up, and one of the red fire shrimp will jump on the side and start cleaning them. And the fish is like swimming around. The fish is, or the shrimp is hitching a ride cleaning. It's always cool to see that. I That's like fun. That. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Yep. Uh, do, do, do. Any more cleanup crew questions? Let me know. I still have to draw for a giveaway or two. <gasps> what am I going to win? Did you enter? <laughs> no, I just agreed to this live stream. That's fair. Um, so I am drawing for some copepods, which I technically somebody was supposed I'm entering. to enter. <laughs> it's close. You had to enter it by yesterday. And oh, you... I know. Drop the mic out of here. Drop the headphones, I guess, which is part of the mic. Um, okay. So there was a winner for Canada for some previous copepods. And it's been a week in three emails and they have not yet responded. Oh, wow. So if they reach out to me, I still may hook them up. But in the meantime, I'm drawing a new winner in case they never respond. There you go. So I always draw twice. That way you have a backup winner. <laughs> exactly. So we have that. And also a D&D &D jump card to keep your fish safe. Keep them in the tank. And that's Does the other one. Any tank? Because I got a 400 gallon and I haven't entered yet. <laughs> yeah, man. I think it's like up to six foot by three foot, I believe it can be up to. It's a pretty, pretty solid size. Actually, I will show you the box. Let's see it. I mean, depending on what size the tank is. But they're a fairly substantial size. Are you sure that's not just a potato gun? <laughs> Hit the roof. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So we are going to do this drawing because they're fun. So what is that? It's just a screen. I mean, how does it stay rigid? Are there like rails inside there you're assembling? I don't oh, know. Oh this... yes, sir. This is this is nice actually. I I don't. I'm too lazy to get the actual. Light. Um. So the cool thing about this one that I like over other brands is it has a flange around the whole perimeter, so it insets itself within the glass. So if you have a nice rimless tank, it sits and you barely even notice it. There's like a millimeter yeah. extruding above the glass, so it just looks really sleek. Um. If you do have a wider tank over, you know, for like. Four feet, I don't know if I bother, but five or six feet, you can use the center brace bar on it. Yeah. So it keeps it nice and rigid. But it's very stealthy for like a top. It's not like an intrusive one. Mm -hmm. so some people I see, they have like the super big flashy ones. And on those, I don't know. Personally, I don't like having a top, so I like it to be as subtle as possible. So that's yeah. why I like this one, because it's pretty sleek looking. <laughs> K-Town second place. I know, everyone's trying to win. I know, I know. So who pays for the shipping? Do you ship it? Um, it all depends. Depends so on like where they are. In, let's say someone in India won this today. Then uh, you're going to ship it to India? This contest <laughs> for the pods, <laughs> there was a Canadian winner and a U.S. winner. Um, the jump guard is U.S. and Canada. It really depends on where it is and who it is. I'm just giving you a hard time. I I've, know. I've lived this. I've done a few giveaways. Yeah. I gave away a book. I was like, oh, someone's going to love this book. Oh, I think I paid like $29 to mail it to someone. I was like, it's... <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm trying to be nice. I was like, this was expensive, you know? <laughs> yep. All right. Okay. Let me find my list. I'm going to redo. Where's all the Canadian list? Give me two secs here. I need to find this. Oh, uh, it's only for Canadians. I see how this is. No, no, no. There was a U.S. winner last week. The Canadian hasn't responded. It's from copopods.ca. Canada Copopods. And there's copopods.com, which is a sister company. So I had a giveaway for each one. Mm -hmm. Now I must find my list. See? Someone from Scotland wants to win. You have to pick him. I know. The problem is shipping copopods is tricky. Live what, things. Liquid with animals? You think the governments care? That's what I said, but apparently they do. <laughs> All right. Dust up somewhere. I have my list. Copapod finalist. Ha ha ha. Here we go. Do you have a randomizer you use, or do I just randomly spit out numbers and you say that's a winner? No, uh, I, I'm going to take the same group from last time. I'll get the same finalists around. Um, so, what I did is the software that I was using for the giveaway, 
Um, I told it to pick 15 winners, and then I throw those 15 people onto the wheel of death or wheel of winning, depending how you look at it. <laughs> I like the wheel of death. <laughs> so I like... You kill 14 people, so the last remaining person gets the prize? You betcha. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> Such a good way to do it. I love it. The wheel of death. Oh, man, I'm going to steal that idea from my website. You betcha. Matter of fact, that is such a great idea. I'm giving it a thumbs up. All right. <laughs> okay, now I need to make sure it, the important thing is remove choice after you land on it. Apply changes. All right. Okay. So this is the wheel. This will be, let me just double check I have the right list. This is for. Do we need to watch? I mean, I don't see nothing. Yeah, you do. I see me and you. Yeah, well, the stream's 30 seconds behind ish on YouTube, so you'll see it in a second. Okay, okay I'm waiting. All right. Okay, so it should show up. The wheel of death. Yes. <gasps> Death or winning, take your pick. Either way. Uh, okay, so this is going to be the redraw. For everyone that was a finalist last week, you're getting a second chance here for the Canada Cocoa Pods pack. And this is a seed pack, which has various zooplankton as well as some phytoplankton to help seed that tank or reseed it. And... Click the spin! Click the spin! All right, all right, all right. Okay, ready? 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 I am. Wait, got to line it up. <laughs> Somebody says you need to remove the previous winner. Oh, that's a good call. Ah, oh, sorry, Brad. <laughs> okay, all right, Brad's gonna get a second chance. I do, do need to re remove the second win, just in case he doesn't respond again. Very well, Keith. If Keith, if you're watching and you actually are paying attention, I will still help you out. Okay. But you need to respond. It's three emails so far. This 20 second lag is throwing me way off. I don't understand. Have you spun yet? Nothing's happened to my. Yeah, I, I did. I know. I know. That's the hard thing. <laughs> That's really hard. <laughs> yep. Okay. And now after after we do this, we're gonna draw for the jump guard. Someone's gonna take home a jump spin. guard. That was great. You... There we go. All right. The spin is up. And and, it and... I know. I'm... Oh, you're on the last. This is okay. Shan S. See, it's that laggy. <laughs> Shan S. I know. I know. Darn YouTube. Farewell, Shan. Sorry, Shan. Oh, Kyle. Sorry, Kyle. Do the spinny thing again. Oh, the reefer. Sorry, the reefer. I always feel bad for people, even though I'm like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> uh, Candice. Sorry, Candice. Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> Sorry, buddy. He's actually gotten pods off me before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If it's always the same winner, we think it's fixed. Yeah. yeah. Eric. Sorry, Eric. This is why I use the wheel, so there's no fixing. It's 100% random. Oh, you are killing them off. Yeah. One at a time. Yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. K-Town. Sorry, buddy. You're local, though. I can just hook you up with pods. You don't need to win them. <laughs> and, 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 and. Oh, Keith is out. Dun, dun, dun. And, and, and Corwin. Ah, oh, sorry, Corwin. All right, we're getting down there. This is spinning pretty quick today. I'm click happy. Oh, Brad. Sorry, Brad. You're gone anyways last round, so it evened out. And, and Darren. Sorry, Darren. Okay, we have, we're almost down to the finalists. I know, K-Town, I know. Charles, sorry, Charles. So we got Oliver and John. John left. I don't know if either of you are on here. All right, so Charles, farewell. Ready for it? This is going to figure out who's left. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, sorry, Oliver. So it looks like John. John Glynn. I don't know if John's online, but if you are, congratulations, John. John is from. Orilla, Ontario. I've not heard of Orilla, but John, I will shoot you an email. So respond and we will get in touch to figure out shipping for that. Now, what else we got? We got one more round. Now this one is going to be for the D&D jump guard. So the question is, how many people should we do for finalist? Pick a number. Pick a number, Mark. How many people for 90, the wheel? 97. No, oh, that's a lot. We'll be spinning for hours. I could. I know. And I could shorten the spin time. <laughs> the number's too high. Uh, you want to do uh, 20. 20? Okay. All right. Let me quickly edit this. So edit options. 
I need to draw 20 winners, and then the 20 winners will go down to the final winner on the wheel. Dun, dun, dun. That's so crazy. Did you draw? Did you design this thing yourself? No, I just found some. I, I just, I'll show you later. I have a little system. It's cute. Thank you. It's fun. I like it. It makes it more exciting. I mean, it's much more dramatic than just lay up like, boom, win winner. Yeah. I like drawing it out. Yeah. No, I like the wheel of death. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so drawing 20 names out of the 500 or so entries. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Oh, I feel bad for 480 other people. I want 500 on the wheel. We, I want to see the slivers. We will be here all night. <laughs> yeah, but think what the wheel would look like. It'd be like a rainbow. I know. It'd be very colorful. <laughs> okay. I got... Braveheart recommended 720 names. All right. Well, we, we got 19 names. So we're 19 names are going on the wheel. Uh, there is 20, but one of the guys somewhere far away that wasn't eligible, so I apologize. Brief asked how to join. I have no idea. I'm just a guest. How to join the live or the, the contest? I'm sure he means the contest. That's all you're talking about right now. Uh, where did my thing go? Uh, so every video I've done for the past month has had a contest on it. I decided to be really nice and do tons of giveaways for the holidays. So there was a link in the description of every wheel lately. Or ah, every video. <laughs> Paste list. There we go. Boop. Replace. Bad choices. I think every spin you should remove one name and throw in one pellet of food in your tank. But that's in a different room. This is a predicament here. Throw hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have a system for doing the auto feeder remotely. You get out the walkie talkie or you tell Alexa to. <laughs> Tell your girlfriend to go put the food in the tank. Oh, that's great. So true. You're on it. Good memory. That was a good that one, was though. A funny video. Yeah, it was. Okay, so what do we got here? So if anyone's in the chat, I want to know. We got Kenny Tor, Alex Doke, Ricky, Gas, V's Reef, Gabe, Mon Montero. I apologize. I butchered your guys' names. Brandon Light, Paul Muller, Jeb Fleming, Josh Amarenta, Duke Kish, Stacy Tors. Jeff Pratt, Eric Hiseo, uh, Robert Spielman, Brendan Courier, Chris Hendy, Nato, Jared Watton, and Bryce Castillo. I like how you ask, are you in the chat? It's like you have the chat there, just have them all say, yes, I'm here. No, but they're <laughs> real names versus YouTube usernames. So, oh, yeah, uh, uh, right? It's tricky because I can pretend that I'm Brad. <laughs> That's, this is why I this is why I emailed the address they entered with, so it's yeah. not like some fake person trying to be like, "Hey, I won." Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, let's do this. First spin. First spin. Lisa's Aquatics loses. Dun, 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 dun. Totally she was a finalist in one of the draws. Oh, oh yeah. Bryce is out of there. <sighs> throw hard. <laughs> okay, next pellet. Yeah, throw the pellet. <laughs> I know. Do you have cats or anything in the house that can like play with the pellets on the floor? They could be arranged. <laughs> oh, Paul. Sorry, Paul. Paul's out of here. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, NATO. NATO shows up a lot. Sorry, NATO. You may or may not have been in the stream. <laughs> and, and, and. Oh, V's Reef. Sorry, V. Hey, Brandon's here. Yay. Brandon is here. Good luck, Brandon. Oh, he's on the wheel somewhere. Oh, I know. It's it's more fun when there's people actually in it. Ah, uh, sorry, Jeff. I still see Brandon on the list. So far, so good. Um, anyone have in the chat? They're asking, does anyone have any thoughts on the Aquamats skimmers or own one? I've heard actually good things. I've never owned one, but I was having a conversation with someone for like an affordable skimmer the other day, and a couple of people recommended that one. So, uh, no personal experience, but I've heard they're pretty decent. They there. make them where they fit in a sump or they hang on the back of the tank. They have both yeah. kinds. Uh, Gabe. Sorry, Gabe. And Marine Depot. Check out Marine Depot. They're kind of the main suppliers for Aquamax. Uh, yeah, it's their brand. Jared. Farewell, Jared. Farewell. <laughs> it's been nice knowing you, Jared. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Oh, Brandon, it skipped you. You're lucky you're still in there. Oh, Rick. Fairly well. Okay, wait. Go spit it again. And, and, and. Oh, Kenny. Bye, Kenny. <laughs> Who killed Kenny? The wheel. No, don't put a cleanup crew in your tank while it's cycling. Yeah, wait wait till the end of the cycle. Uh, Chris. 
Very well, Chris. Don't even turn sorry, on your Chris. lights during the cycle. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Gabe. You're in the chat. Ah, oh, sorry, Stacy. Sad face. Yep. Oh, Brandon. Sorry, Brandon. Now, there's still one more contest that's still open. And then I'm out of contest. Ah, oh, I might sneak one more. I, 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 I approached a bunch of people to arrange a bunch of contests for the holiday. And then I cut a bunch. That's why it's been like, giveaway for the last month. Um, lean up cream crew during cycling. Yeah, I would avoid clean up crew during your cycle. Wait till after your cycle's done. Then you can slowly start adding them in after that. You shouldn't really have a big issue when you're tank cycling anyways. There's no reason to put a cleanup crew in a tank with a cycle full of ammonia. Yeah, they'll just die. And then you'll have nutrients, which will cause algae issue. So bad plan. Next spin. Oh, Robert. Sorry, Robert. Now, if you guys have not entered, my last big tank update video may have a LG church scrubber giveaway in it, if you're paying attention. Is it the one you have under your tank? You're giving it away? The same model. That one's mine. That one's staying. But it, it's same model as that one, though. You're like, it's going to come to your door full of algae. <laughs> <laughs> Preceded. <laughs> hey, that could be a benefit. We'll shave off like a week or two of getting it seated. You should oh, send it. Oh, Brandon. With Sorry, buddy. Batteries connected so the light's still burning and the plants are still growing <laughs> while it's in transport. With, with a little reptile <laughs> mister that mists every once in a while. Trickle. Yeah, it should be trickling. <laughs> you pick up the box and you're like, what's that sound? Yeah. <laughs> Just this side up on the box. Oh, Alex. Sorry, Alex. We're getting down to the, to the wire here. I can't tell. I'm like 30 seconds behind no, you. I'm I... Robert Spielman still. You'll just have to trust me. Ah, oh, Jeb Fleming. Sorry, Jeb. There's three names left. We're almost at the finalist. Ah, oh, Josh. Sorry, Josh. And, 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 and. Just rubbing oh, it in. Oh, Duke is out. Poor Duke. <laughs> and Eric. Eric Hiseo. Congrats. Congratulations, Eric. So, Eric just won himself a nice, beautiful D&D top for your tank. Congratulations. Oh, that was the end? I'm still watching the spin over here. Oh. I hate this lag. This is terrible. I know. I know. It's like talking to someone from the future. Do, 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 do. I am for the future. The lottery numbers? Intro the next 20 seconds, right? Yep. <laughs> Eric, congratulations. Congratulations! If you're watching. Your D &D screen and if top. you're not watching, you better install this thing on your tank and keep your fish from dying. Exactly. It is definitely an awesome top. It's very sleek. I really like mine. That's why I'm giving one away. So, congratulations. I'm glad you a picture in the stream showing what it looks like installed. That was really good. Like this? <laughs> A team. No, not like that. Not like that at all. Well, <laughs> there was an actual video about it that I tied the contest Still, to. So anyone that enters... Watch, they're only here for the wins. No, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. They probably did because that's how they know about the contest. <laughs> so if you guys haven't entered yet, make sure you guys check out the last tank update because that one most definitely has a nice sweet contest attached. And hey, the, Mark, the wheel turned into Mark. Welcome back, Mark. Hey, I'm back! Yeah. I'm still actually waiting for myself to appear on your screen. This is Devin from the future. About 30 seconds from now, you'll see yourself in the past. Weird, eh? It really is odd watching this in the wrong order. Now the tube just appeared on my screen. <laughs> yeah. This, so funny. this is why I just watch the chat, just because it just messes with you if you look at the video. Yeah, it does. It blows your mind. It's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, what else we got? All right, guys. I think I'm going to call her for now. I think we answered all the questions, at least the ones I saw pop up. Congratulations to the two winners. If you guys enjoyed this, smash that but like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And if you haven't entered yet, make sure you check out last Monday's video because there's Give a... a thumbs up. <laughs> I like your sign. I should get one of those. Get one of those big bone awesome? hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you. So I got this at Comic Con. Oh, nice. And it said sci-fi on it, and there was an interactive with the audience, and you mm -hmm. had to tell them, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down yep. to answer the questions. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's going to be mine now. This is great. This will come in handy occasionally. You need to bust it out more on the live streams. You're, you know, I never think about you're it. You're like, and here's this product. You're like, thumbs up, thumbs down. We see it always be thumbs up on me because I never say anything negative about products on my own channel. <laughs> I, yeah, I just don't do a video about it if I don't like it. I'm just like, nope, not, not getting a video. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah, I'd rather not talk about it than like bash it. I'm just like, right. nope. Focus on the good. Yeah, exactly. 
All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I think we're going to call our quits for today. Congrats to the winners. Rogue Aquariums, thank you very much for the 499 Super Chat. And Mark, thank you for coming on and sharing your, your vast knowledge of little cleanup critters. Happy to do it. I just happened to have all these critters here, and it was the perfect timing. I loved it. That was perfect. All right, guys. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Bye.